here in software. And uh, today I'm going to uh, tell you about our experience of using such tool as a data hub. So uh, let's start. Okay, so uh, we will talk about data hub, about its uh, key features. So also, I will show you example how it was used at our project, and I'll show you a demo of uh, data hub. Okay, and uh, now, like as an introduction, we can talk about that uh, currently we have a lot of data, and that data is saved in different places. So we have like houses, data warehouses, we have data lakes, and so on. So data is saved in different places, and we need to have a tool that somehow to manage this data. So we need to know uh, where to find the data, like which table to use, uh, who is the owner of this table, whom I need to ask some clarification questions and so, and so on. So it's uh, all about data management. So previously we just had, for example, Oracle or SQL Server and everything was there. And we knew that uh, if I need to find something, I will look into Oracle. Currently, like uh, everything is changed and we need to have such tool. And the current, I present you a data hub a data hub is a data management tool. So actually a data hub you can consider like a Google for your metadata. So here on screen you can see like a main page of a data hub when you like install it on, uh, on your environment and it has uh, this uh, search uh, like search place where you can find any information about data which is in your data platform so it can uh, it can read metadata from different sources it can be different data warehouses databases it can read it can read the data from uh, nosql databases also for example if you are using a data like as it was in our case, we were using data lake on S3 and on top of data lake, we have blue data catalog. So it can connect to this uh, blue data catalog and uh, like it can grab all this data. So uh, what is uh, the key features of uh, this data hub? <clears throat> As I previously mentioned, uh, the main feature is uh, that it is like a Google for metadata. It is a centralized metadata repository. So you can find information about metadata, which is in your, like, in your data platform. Uh, a second feature is that you can study this metadata and you can search something. So for example, I need to know where in my data platform there is information about customers. So I'll, I can like uh, write this in, uh, in the search area and it will return on all data about customers. So for example, customers exist in data warehouse, in data lake. Maybe I have some documentation about customers. Maybe I have some data quality tests about customers. So everything will be uh, displayed in this like uh, in the search result uh, the third uh, what is uh, very important is data lineage uh, as you may know, like we have data in different sources, we have different ETLs, different jobs, and sometimes it is a very difficult task to find where is data coming from. So at the end, for example, in the report, we have some data and we don't know what is the source of this data. So with Data Hub, you can like during building those transformation pipelines, you can connect a data hub to these uh, pipelines in order to draw this beautiful picture of data lineage. Uh, of course, the next one is uh, data governance. So when we have like for each entity in data hub, you have like visual page, visual page of each entity, and you can fill information about data governance. You can fill information who is data steward, where data is coming from. You also, you can fill some documentation. So there is no need to have confluence, many Excel files and all other stuff. Everything can be in one place. Uh, next one is uh, you can like add data quality and data validation. So one of the most like the most popular data quality tool is a, a great expectation. So it supports great expectation tests. So you can like uh, connect your great expectation results to the entity and from the data hub UI, you can see if it was passed or failed. Also, it uh, supports a lot of uh, a lot of different connections, so it can connect to uh, different uh, cloud solutions, also not cloud solutions. It, it has pretty good documentation, how to connect and how to add new sources. And also Data Hub, it is a free and open source tool, and it has its code in Git. So you can easily download this code. And for example, if you need to add some additional functionality, you can change it and add it. 
So at our project, actually, we extended functionality because we needed to add additional button for request access. So we like uh, we were using it. Okay. If you have any questions, you can interrupt me because uh, I'm maybe I'm talking too fast. Okay, if no questions, here we have a data hub architecture. So under the hood, it use a lot of like a, a lot of tools. So it use Kafka, Elasticsearch, MySQL. Also, it use some REST API in order to connect all this stuff. But what is uh, the good news? The data hub prepared everything like uh, everything for us. So you can use a Docker container, for example, where all this stuff is already like pre-built and installed, and you can use it from Docker. But for example, if your project is growing up and so on, it's like it is not good to use it in Docker. So uh, there is a guide how to install this data hub on AWS, on GCP, on Azure. So maybe on every like uh, the most popular cloud series that there is instructions how you can install it so this like kafka elastic search my, my sql have to uh, like spin up this service in order the ui will be accessible and so on so it has pretty good uh, like uh, pretty good documentation and also it has its support chats in slack and if you uh, like ask some questions someone will be, will answer so it's like it is very good and uh, we are moving to next part. It's about uh, experience of using Data Hub. So we were using Data Hub and uh, one uh, global mining company. So when you have a project which is an enterprise project which has a lot of sources, uh, it is very good to use this Data Hub. So that global mining company, it is a company which like uh, which are buying different other companies. And it is so big that they even use different cloud solutions for different departments. And they uh, were needed to know like uh, what is going on with their data to somehow to analyze. They uh, needed to some centralized uh, repository for metadata. That's why Data Hub was proposed and we implemented it. Uh, okay, uh, here we have like uh, that solution architecture which was proposed. On the right side, we have Data Hub, and actually, it's uh, that what what was implemented by our team, like by my team. Uh, IoT, IoT devices also was implemented by SoftServe team, but now we are more concentrating on the right part. So on the right part, we have that we had like pretty easy and understandable ETL process. So we have ingestion, transformation, storage, and visualization. But what is important here that through like to each step of this process was connected data hub in order to grab metadata about it. So uh, like different uh, end users using SSO authentication can log in into data hub and explore what we have in a data lake. And uh, for example, different data scientists and the data anal uh, analyst will know what information we have in a data hub and will know where to request access. So uh, for example, end users is, uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, it was loud here. Uh, yeah, so uh, like uh, different end users can query data hub and for example i need to know where i have customers table mm -hmm. and i find that customers table are saved on s3 and a SEMA. so i can request access to it and after that to use it like uh, to use it in my program in my visualization tool and so on so it was uh, the main idea of this solution architecture okay let's move next uh, next here we have like a more detailed description of data lake which was uh, like which was implemented data layer which was implemented so it consists of three layers and uh, data were moving from landing to staging to an, uh, uh, to analysis part yeah as we have here so we had landing layer staging layer and analytics so it depends on data source data we are going to staging or to landing for example, if data is uh, from a different, like uh, have different files, they are coming to landing area after process to staging and to analytics. If data is coming from some like uh, data sources, like uh, like databases, it's coming to staging layer and after that process to analytics. So it's uh, the logic which was applied there. Okay, uh, next one. 
so uh, what we did uh, during that project, so uh, the aim of that project was to prepare uh, infrastructure for that data platform. So uh, we were not working with the actual data set, with real data, only with a few like with a few sources, with a few files. But the main idea was to prepare the data platform. So we prepared this uh, data hub. Uh, we prepared different data pipelines, how to ingest the data, and we prepare everything, and we were ready to ingest uh, new, like, uh, new real data into the data hub. Yeah. And uh, here we have like a screenshots from that uh, uh, from that uh, what was uh, implemented here. So uh, we had like airflow for orchestrations. We saved our data in Redshift and on S3. As a sources of data, we had uh, IoT uh, sitewise. Also, we used Kinesis as a source of data. For transformation, we used uh, Glue. And uh, for data like uh, for data exploration, for data analytics, was used QuickSight and Athena. Uh, okay. Uh, next one here. It's like uh, it's uh, just uh, a screenshot of uh, like of data hub. So we have here like a file slim sim cycle. It's one of the files which were loaded, and as you can see here. So in data hub, we can like explore, explore the schema of the file and also we can explore the description. So why it was using. Actually, currently on this screen, this description is not very, uh, very descriptive, but uh, it, what was shared for, by customer to us. Also, what is very important here, it is a data lineage. So later I will show you it also on demo. So uh, we can track uh, the data from start till the end. And in a visual representation, we can see like which tool was processing data, where data was inserted and so on. Uh, what is important to mention here that like uh, in order to have this information in data lineage, you uh, you need to manage it by itself. So like when we are creating Airflow DAX, you need to add additional lines about that. Like I need Data Hub to know about this, uh, what is happening there. And all, also when we are working with glue jobs and all other stuff. So uh, Data Hub is not uh, smart enough to know everything what is going on in your data lake. You need just to, uh, to tell him that uh, like, uh, yeah. Please visualize this uh, in uh, data lineage. Yeah. Uh, also, as I mentioned, uh, like we can add a different data quality test here. And uh, here we have the result of running this test. So like there is no need to have the different UI for data quality as we have it in great expectation. Like it's just integrated here. Also, what is important uh, that you can also see some table statistics from the data. It will just like some uh, uh, data hub will select the data and grab the statistics. So, for example, the user which will query the data in data hub will understand that, for example, in this dim track table, like I have these columns, so these whole columns might have these values and so on. Like um, with this sample of uh, samples of values, it would be enough to understand whether I need to request access to this uh, to this entity or not. And uh, the last one here that Data Hub at new functionality. So what was added from our side? It's this small button request access. It's not like a, uh, it's not a built in functionality from Data Hub. So we added it. And uh, uh, like uh, the main idea is, for example, user found that I need to have access to them to this dim track uh, like uh, data source, and uh, it will redirect to Asana form, and you can like fill all the information needed in order to in order to request access. And the uh, next one is uh, like uh, the most interesting part. I think it's about demo the data hub. So uh, what we have here. Uh, data hub have its own site with different information with like uh, with all documentation uh, and so on here we have documentation about different sources have to connect to data hub so i opened here like airflow integration what is uh, like what is very good here that they even have code examples have to use it so for example uh, from uh, from Airflow, they have like a different file where we have the example how to integrate this Airflow in Data Hub. So it is like very convenient and useful. And also here, what we have, we have another page which is called demo. So when you install Data Hub from Docker or maybe using all of that uh, cloud stuff, you will see this page. 
So, and uh, like uh, from what is the main idea that user can find some information. So I will find information about customers because it's really popular. I'm pretty sure that they must have this customers. Yeah, and it like currently it is like looking through the old data platform which we have here. So as it is a demo example, so I think that they have almost all like all sources of data, and you can like uh, even filter what data source you need to have. For example, I want the snowflake, and I can like uh, move further to see information which I have here to see if they have documentation. They don't have documentation to see data lineage. I can like see it here. It will like. Uh, it will show some information, but uh, uh, more interesting is to click on this visualize linear edge button, and we will see from uh, where data is coming from and where is data is coming to. So we can like click it till the end and understand what is going on there. And also when we click here, we can see also documentation information about all this stuff. Uh, yeah. I think that's all what I wanted to share about Data Hub. So uh, do you have any questions? Or can you hear me? Yeah, guys, if uh, someone has uh, questions, please unmute and ask. Yulia, thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for such a great overview. Uh, it was very insightful and interesting. Uh, I do have um, questions. Uh, one, if there is possibility in Data Hub to bring some business glossary and to have some descriptions that are on these data sources to make them more meaningful for business users, and is it expected that, that business users uh, are going to use it as well? So it's just number one. Yeah, so actually, they uh, it it has like a, a different tabs with documentation. So if we are looking for some, for example, at least that customers, we have documentation here and you can feel like in Confluence documentation about it. You can also add owners of the data. You can also add to which domain it exists and so on. So uh, there are a lot of functionality and actually it's like, a, I think it's more intended also not only to developers, but for business users, like, I don't know, business analysts, uh, product owners, and so on, to query data and to understand what is going on. You even can, like, save queries. So, for example, user can copy these queries and, uh, like, uh, and run it. Like we have, for example, in, uh, I forget, in Alation. So if you used Alation, they have also documentation and queries and so on. It's another metadata tool. So here in the Data Hub, they also have this functionality. Great. And uh, other specific roles described uh, in order to like use Data Hub, uh, like which of the roles should exist? I yeah, mean so actually, they have its own admin profile admin profile and you can configure here that admin administration also it has sso integration so uh, we like we had plans to investigate uh, like uh, that roles whether it can be like inherited from for example we are using aws or not but we like didn't like didn't have time to do it but it has administration from this data hub site and you can create users groups and so on and like uh, in order to to give access or, or like uh, or other stuff. Cool, cool. Um, and the other question is um, like I assume it's not possible to do something like that, but just to confirm. So um, basically, it's it will help to extract all metadata, and if something need to be changed, for example, description for certain columns, right? It <laughs> should be then done by uh like to to tell the uh user to go in the actual data source and make changes there it's no, not actually possible. this documentation is filled by you here so there is like a way how to programmatically upload this documentation but how we used it like just like just edit and end the doc documentation also about the schemas we gi uh, we gave access to needed person and uh, that like responsible person filled this description here Okay, so this description is not something that is exported from the yeah, uh, yeah. source. It's filled by not... you, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and if there is some description already in the um, like in the source, it can be also uploaded here. But there is no link. Uh, I mean, back to source to push some description no, there. No. No, it's like it's uploaded and it needs to be changed there. Also, there is a possibility to add different tags. 
and you can like uh, like I don't know search data by tax. So we are using we were using different tax, for example, trucks, uh, different minings, and so on. So we had uh, that tax. Okay, and then um, regarding the changes of metadata, mm -hmm. uh, is there any way then to track how it was changed over the time? Uh, no, it doesn't have this, like uh, how it was changed previously. No, it doesn't have such functionality. It doesn't save previous state, for example, of table and so on. It's read uh, the current state when you are running those pipelines. Okay, okay, cool. And if there is change in this data source, so it will just overwritten? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. I think it's a really cool overview and uh, nice uh, to know functionality uh, and great too. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yula, I have a question about how much does it cost? So it is free because it's like open source, but as I mentioned under the hood, it use a lot of services. So it use Kafka, it use Elasticsearch, it use MySQL and so on. So you will pay for that services. That's why it's pretty costly. Mm -hmm. And uh, second question regarding maybe integrate this uh, data hub, data management platform with uh, Azure Data Lake, for example, and work with, for example, files. So, yeah, yeah it, it support all uh, like all other popular clouds, so GCP, Azure, AWS, uh, like 100%. Maybe, for example, uh, create a data management and the source will be JSON and uh, analyze it and understand that this uh, which uh, attributes in and which type of attributes it has uh, functionality it... to add new data source so but uh, how will it be working with json like to analyze because under the hood it doesn't have any functionality to explore something so you have for example jobs for in our case we were using aws we had glue jobs for different transformation uh -huh. and we were using glue data catalog and it was reading data from glue data catalog that meta, that metadata we are just connecting so it doesn't uh, do any transformations analytics and so on it just read what you give to uh, to to this tool Thank you. One more question. Uh, first of all, again, thanks for presentation. Uh, we use pretty niche database. Uh, I, I understood this data hub exposes REST API that supports custom registering of like any data source, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, have you tried to use this API? Is it rich enough? Uh, maybe it provides only basic information and functionality like register schema and that's it. No, actually, uh, we had as a source as relational databases, and uh, that information which we had in files, we were loaded by ETL, and almost all other information, it was from IoT devices, so it was streaming information. Okay, got it. Thanks. Hi, thanks for this presentation. I have also one question. It's about how did this project start? Did the client know that they want data hub so they asked please help us with data hub or they didn't know and it was suggested by softserve uh, and was... maybe you did some discovery like how you compare data hub with other solutions uh, yeah it was uh, like uh, as i mentioned before this global mining company it is a very big and large company they came to softserve and asked to recommend something so uh, that requirements was only recommend something and the uh, software was doing a discovery from uh, different parts so it was a data part the data analytics part iot part and so on uh, the results of discovery were, were presented and uh, was presented this data hub and it was approved and we started uh, like investigating of it like uh, i wasn't involved from the beginning so i don't know if there were considered some other tools apart from data hub but as i know uh, like it was uh, the only tool uh, that we are uh, we were using it's like was an, an idea what what we can do from data platform side data hub okay thanks a lot Any other questions?